Good afternoon my dear students, this is my second session of the day. I was at 8 o'clock to present a class on quantitative aptitude. I believe all of you attended the class. On Monday again we shall have three online live sessions. Good afternoon everybody, one at 8 o'clock, another one at 12 o'clock the news analysis and a third one at 3 p.m. all on Monday and uh, we will have our today's third online session at 3 p.m. Ensure that all of you participate. Of course, the number of participants for the live sessions goes up which is heartening, but on the other side what is disheartening is that many others are not coming online. It is a chance for us to interact, it is a chance for us to know each other. We have been locked up in our houses for almost a year. So, it is a chance for us to know whom we teach. So, please ensure that uh, you all uh, come live. There are a few people who attend all the sessions which is really heartening, um, uh, but a few others are not. So, find enthusiasm, do not think that you require always motivation from external sources. The real motivation has to come from within. We have a great goal in front of us. Look plenty of exams are coming, State Bank of India's clerical examination will be notified any time in the early 2021 in 2021. So, please another opportunity look IBPS clerical, IBPS officers, State Bank of India officers and soon the 2021 State Bank of India clerical. So, we have got a lot of examinations coming, make sure that you are really pumped up and work hard, so that we can have a job card in your pocket by the first half of 2021 itself. <coughs> Newspaper analysis cannot be avoided, general awareness is an an integral part of all these exams process. So, please ensure that you um, uh, uh, take the analysis very seriously and go through my weekly notes and daily test very seriously. Uh, I gave you a video on the State Bank of India's apprenticeship exa examination. I gave my thought and opinion. I believe uh, it would help you. Of course, I do not like my students applying for an apprenticeship because that, that is not something that we are looking at. We are looking for a decent permanent um, job in the public sector banks or in, uh, or in big private banks, but not an apprenticeship. Apprenticeship is not something that we are aim not aiming at by this sort of hard preparation. So, that is my opinion which I gave very clearly. Do not think that State Bank of India at some point of time will make you permanent if you complete your apprenticeship, that is not the case. A State Bank of India has very clearly said that that is not the case. I have given my opinion in the, uh, uh, in the YouTube channel. Make sure that uh, uh, you all subscribe to our social media channels, the YouTube channel um, because I shall be communicating, we shall be communicating with all news, relevant news to us through the channel. So, and give you a post uh, 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 also, that will be a great encouragement because I personally like um, giving the, giving my thoughts on your, your, your questions. So, ensure that uh, you respond to uh, our uh, uh, videos and uh, uh, your encouragement is uh, going to be the real encouragement to us. So, we shall start. Uh, I am going to start with the November 20, 2020 news. This has been the major, the opening page of the Hindu terror funding, Syed gets 10 years in jail. Okay, we shall check one by one. Mumbai terror attack mastermind 
and uh, JUD chief Hafiz Syed was sentenced to 10 years in jail in Pakistan. This has to be read along with this particular news item. Financial Action Task Force, Financial Action Task Force, FATF. Financial Action Task Force kept Pakistan in its grey list a few weeks ago. Any country that is sponsoring terrorism in its land and uh, promoting or not trying to stop money laundering will be kept under FATF list. So, FATF list, FATF is a group of uh, seven countries, G7 countries mooted FATF a few years back and Pakistan, Pakistan's revision to move out of FATF would come in February 2021. So, Pakistan has to do something. Pakistan has to do something to come out of FATF. If FATF is still in place and if Pakistan is kept in either the blacklist or the grey list, Pakistan does not stand a chance to get financial help from big countries. So, Pakistan is under real pressure to take steps against uh, uh, terrorism activities and uh, uh, money laundering activities happening from its soil. That is the reason why Pakistan has uh, um, um, included uh, uh, JUD chief in jail, kept JUD chief in jail. So, um, the, uh, if you go by the history of this country, we cannot um, uh, ensure that uh, this has been an honest action. But of course, uh, Pakistan has uh, been doing its bit to come out of uh, uh, the international suspicion. Okay. I am straight away coming to the center page curbing on curbing on air bigotry. Uh, this has got uh, the Hindu is commenting that uh, uh, on, on Chief Justice of India's observation, Chief Justice of India led uh, Supreme Court bench asked uh, uh, the Solicitor General meaning ask the central government, what action have you taken uh, on controlling the uh, uh, media bigotry. Uh, so, Supreme Court asked whether central government has got any used its authority to control the bigotry and Supreme Court in India, India clearly said, we do not have trust in news broadcasters association which is a self regulatory mechanism. So, you should understand that there is a self regulatory mechanism to control broadcasters, but Supreme Court of India says that it does not have any belief. Government of India uh, is uh, keeping a bit safe distance because any action by the government of India would be construed as a, an action on curbing uh, press freedom. So, the Hindu says that uh, Supreme Court of India's action will reach to some degree of outreach. So, we have to wait and see this is the comment of the newspaper. So, we have to have different opinion. The newspaper, newspaper the Hindu has applied its conscience and says that you tend to say that it may not be the territory of in, uh, the Supreme Court to decide on uh, uh, regulatory mechanisms. Rather, the it has to come from larger discussion and uh, by the government and of course, we have to take the uh, newspaper uh, sorry the, the, the channels also uh, uh, when they come out with a kind of a regulatory mechanism. So, that is the uh, essence of the article. Another bailout overall banking sector health is a concern despite RBI's pre preemptive rescue efforts. Preemptive means taking an action before something happens. Preemptive move you might have heard preemptive move. Okay. Reserve Bank of India recently decided to uh, go for a moratorium on 
um, the Karur based uh, Lakshmi Vilas Bank. That is an important information Karur based uh, Lakshmi Vilas Bank. Lakshmi Vilas Bank's uh, uh, non performing asset went up to almost 26 percentage which is really alarming and the bank has not been able to get fresh capital from the market. When your performance goes really bad, when your performance goes really bad, you will find it difficult to get fresh capital from the market. So, that was what happened. Economics of an organization uh, or a country is not that different from that of a family. So, when you are non performing asset, you are into something and you are not able to do well in that, you are non performing asset as just 26 percentage. What is it mean by non performing asset? You have given loans, but the loans remain unpaid, timely payment is disturbed. That is why such loans are classified as non performing asset. So, when the NPA goes up, it is bad for the bank. So, the NPA levels went up to almost 26 percentage for uh, uh, Lakshmi Vilas Bank and the bank found it very difficult to get fresh capital from the market to meet the Basel norm requirements. I shall take a class on Basel norms later on, not now. So, NPAs touched 25 point uh, uh, 4 percentage, 25.4 percentage was uh, the NPA levels of uh, um, uh, the Lakshmi Vilas Bank and capital adequacy ratio turned to be 0 0.88 percentage. These are all bad stuffs for a bank. So, Reserve Bank of India swung into action and Reserve Bank of India applied a moratorium. Why? Because all of a sudden when the bank's financials got eroded, the public became very much aware of it and they started uh, uh, running on the bank, meaning they have started withdrawing their deposits. So, all the sensing the uh, sense sensing what is in the offing, Reserve Bank of India applied a moratorium on withdrawals. Now, uh, customers can withdraw only 25,000. This moratorium will be applicable for a one month, for a month and parallelly Reserve Bank of India is uh, uh, probing uh, uh, the possibility of a merger or a acquisition of a Lakshmi Vilas Bank by DBS, the Singapore based DBS. DBS has got already presence in India, which has got only 25 branches, it is a Singapore based bank. And with the acquisition, if the acquisition takes place, which uh, is mostly going to happen, uh, the bank will pump in, DBS will pump in. Uh, 2500 crore rupees as fresh capital. So, depositors will be happy, their money will be safe, employees will be happy, their job will be safe, but the investors will lose their worth because the share value has come down. So, at the lowest price of prevailing shares that the new acquirer buying the shares. So, they will be virtually losing money. Of course, Indian banks are going through real stress which is uh, the, 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 the fuel is added by the COVID-19, but in the case of Lakshmi Vilas Bank has been reckless lending, it cannot be COVID and all. COVID might have just aggravated the situation, but the bank has not been performing very well. The reckless lending uh, finally uh, put the last nail on uh, the coffers. So, the coffin and uh, um, a DBS will hopefully rescue with the acquisition DBF will DBS will have 500 branches in India. So, they will be looking at the possible inorganic growth uh, through better bank presence in India. Look this has been a beautiful article recently the RCEP was signed by 15 member countries. India walked away from RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic um, uh, Program, uh, RCEP uh, 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 Government of India walked away from RCEP last year. Uh, so, uh, at that time there was there were huge protests from within India. Uh, that if India signed RCEP, uh, it would be uh, conceding to uh, international sorry 
the in conceding to uh, the, the so called free trade pressure and we will be surrendering our domestic uh, manufacturers and agriculturists interests. So, that is why the India, India walked away, but this article says that we missed the boat. In fact, uh, RCEP uh, once it has become the biggest trade block in the world and India lost its opportunity to be a part of the trade block that is what the article says. See there is an agency called the world trade organization, the world trade organization. The world trade organization uh, sits in Geneva and that is the uh, international trade uh, regulator. So, world trade organization promotes free trade. What is meant by free trade I have already told you once, free trade means the goods the idea of free trade is this goods and services must flow beyond the artificial boundaries of nations. The goods and services must fl flow beyond the artificial boundaries of nations without any man made restriction. We know that we have got political uh, we have got political boundaries suppose this is India's boundary. So, this is a political boundary the idea of free trade says that you may have a political boundary, but when it comes to trade international trade this boundary should not work as a barrier. So, which are the three ways by which barrier or barriers operate one, one is that banning others products, we are banning some other countries products or our countries products are banned by some other country that is called banning. Two application of quantitative restrictions, the quantity of imports uh, is restricted we require uh, 10,000 kilogram of product A, but only 2,000 can be imported meaning there is a protection for 8,000. So, that is one thing and the third one is a, a high tariff, imposition of high tariff. These are the three ways by which uh, countries boundaries are protected uh, for trade. So, this is called protectionism. So, protectionism was the order of the day for many many centuries in the world. So, it was in 1948 with the advent of general agreement on tariff and trade got that the country started thinking beyond uh, protectionism and got was the first multilateral agreement. The first multilateral agreement, multilateral means more than two, multilateral agreement uh, to promote free trade. Before that there had been plenty of bilateral, trilateral, country specific, uh, India and China, USA and Russia whatever it be, this is called bilateral or trilateral, two country, three country or country specific trade block. The biggest free trade agreement uh, having membership of nearly 150 countries that is WTO. So, WTO uh, promotes free trade, but the article says that. WTO has been less effective in the past many years and um, it is regional uh, trade blocks that are becoming more <coughs> effective. Uh, big countries have lost almost trust in WTO and they are going for regional groupings and India stands to lose if it is not a part of the biggest trade block that came up through um, the uh, RCEP. So, that is the essence of this article. Um, so, uh, see in 2000 uh, India has benefited heavily, it was in 1991 that uh, we opened up our economy uh, through the new economic policy promoted by govern the government of uh, P. V. Narasim Rao under the finance ministerialship of Dr. Manmohan Singh and India opened up our economy and we benefited heavily through that. That is what the article says. Uh, India's poverty uh, stood at 40 percent in 2004-5 and uh, by 2012 it is almost half to 20 percent. So, the article says that that was because clearly because India opened up our economy. So, India has got the history of in recent times of getting benefited by free trade. So, it is quite um, 
uh, unusual for this country to think and back out from, from the RCEP. That is what the article says. Of course, maybe in the days to come there will be different articles, different ideas which would support uh, India's decision to back out or back, walk away from the RCEP. We have to know with an unbiased mind, we have to know both sides. Then of course, we can make our own opinion. That is the purpose of continuous reading. Parliamentary panel questions Twitter. Listen, what are these parliamentary panels? There are nearly 30 parliamentary panels. Pa in parliamentary democracies, uh, the, the role of parliamentary panels cannot be undermined. A parliamentary panel can summon anybody and uh, take evidence. Uh, so, <coughs> even reprimand, they can even reprimand. So, parliamentary panel questions Twitter. They asked the Twitter head, what is your policy on removing tweets? It has got a connection with uh, um, Kunal Kamra's recent tweets that attacked the Supreme Court for granting TV anchor Arnab Goswami a reprieve after his arrest in an abatement suicide case. This case we discussed many a day, so I am not going to go further. So, um, questioning the Supreme Court's verdict of granting uh, Arnab Goswami uh, a bail, uh, the stand-up comedian Kunal Kamra recently tweeted and that tweet was removed by the Twitter, by Twitter. So, Twitter's authorities were summoned by the parliamentary panel and the, uh, the uh, Twitter authorities were asked, what is your policy on removing a tweet? Okay? Uh, the highest, uh, one of the highest authorities, the parliamentary panel has uh, summoned. So, try to understand that we have got, uh, uh, in our democracy there is a setup. Uh, parliamentary panel all fully authorized and they are responsible only to the parliament. Such panel has uh, authorized. There is joint parliamentary committees are there which can summon even the prime minister. So, it is all powerful uh, committee. Okay. So, this is a joint parliamentary committee on, on data protection. There is parliamentary committee there on defense procurement parliamentary committee on agriculture, different parliamentary committees are there, but it is a joint parliamentary committee on data protection bill. Okay, right. Meaning parliament members from both uh, the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha will make the joint parliamentary committee. Digital India is now a way of way of life, says Prime Minister. Uh, he was speaking virtually, addressing virtually the um, Bengaluru Tech Summit 2020 and uh, you should understand the presence of uh, Australian uh, Prime Minister, Australian Prime Minister um, uh, attended the meeting. Prime Minister was referring to Swamvitwa scheme. Of course, I gave this scheme in my notes and this particular scheme came for State Bank of India's clerical examination also. So, um, um, uh, so, Prime Minister was uh, deliberating on the benefits of technology and the benefits of technology that the government is using for it the best benefits. Uh, uh, through this scheme, government gave land titles to millions of people in rural area. So, it is a for landless people, land is given using the technology. Uh, so, Prime Minister was speaking about it and now India is going to use all its technological um, uh, might to go for one of the biggest vaccination program in the world. Uh, the government of India clearly said that by 2024 the COVID vaccination program will be complete and mind you the task is very big. India's 135 plus crore people are to be vaccinated. So, it is going to be the biggest vaccination program maybe of the world. So, for which also the government of India will be using the technology tool. Okay. So, he was speaking about the benefits of digital India. Read all these articles. When you have got something to speak about digital India, something you have to write about digital India, all this information will come. 
and some of the information will be uh, relevant for your written examination objective questions too. Panel molds MPs, if MPs can teach in universities, uh, listen under article 102 and 191 of the Indian constitution, the MPs and the MLAs cannot hold any office of profit. So, under article 1021 MPs and under article 191 1 MLAs cannot hold any office of profit. They cannot hold any office of profit. So, the question comes what if an MLA or MP goes to a university and give a lecture and get remuneration? Is it possible? That is what the panel uh, um, uh, checks. The uh, panel molds if M MPs can teach in universities and get remuneration. Okay, just keep an information, uh, uh, the relevant articles and all. Vaccine plan ready says uh, um, Harshwarthan, our uh, health minister. So, he says that uh, he was addressing the FICI, uh, FICI FLO's national webinar. Um, these are uh, chambers of trade, FICI. So, he was uh, addressing the FICI FLO national webinar in which he said um, it was estimated that 400 to 500 million vaccine doses will be made available for 200 to 300 million people by July August. So, it is going to be a very big vaccination program. I many times told you that uh, COVID vaccination program that the country is going to undertake will appear in many places in the exams to come. It may appear as a question for your general awareness quest, uh, paper or it may appear as, an, as, an, as a passage for your uh, um, um, English paper or it can even come as a logical paper, question paper. In, in your reasoning, in your reasoning paper. So, please read all these things are very important. The government how it devises, how it is going to devise the vaccination program for this country. It is going to be a mammoth scale stuff and the priorities are also fixed the minister says uh, 55, 60, 50 to 65 age uh, will be are prioritized and uh, uh, those who are below 50 years who have got other diseases they are also uh, prioritized. So, people above uh, 65 years of age and then those from 50 to 65 have been prioritized. So, health workers are prioritized. So, these are the priorities that the government is going to give for uh, the mammoth vaccination program and of course, the government has to have in place uh, good supply chain with good cold chain mechanism okay, because most of the vaccines have to be kept under minus 200 degree Celsius. Face reality on Hong Kong, Beijing tells five eyes. What is this five eyes? Five eyes, USA, UK, Australia, Canada and New Zealand. These are the five eyes. Uh, it is a kind of a intelligence group which uh, is a product of the US UK um, um, agreement. Under the USA UK agreement, these five countries have made a kind of a an intelligence group, they have decided to share human intelligence, security intelligence and military intelligence. This group, uh, the five eyes group uh, has recently said that uh, um, whatever China does in Hong Kong, recently China um, uh, threw away five of the Hong Kong parliamentarians uh, and uh, the five eyes said that it was equivalent to uh, undermining uh, pro-democracy movement in uh, Hong Kong. So, China has, uh, reta has uh, really retaliated verbally saying that no matter if they have five eyes or ten eyes, if they dare to harm China's sovereignty, security and development interests, they should be beware of, beware of their eyes being pocked and blinded. My goodness, this is not the words of a military chief, 
but this is the words of a diplomat and that is quite surprising. Generally, diplomats use uh, very diplomatic words and they do not dare to use words of this kind, but this was an open retaliation by China. Anyway, please make sure that uh, you have got good idea about what is happening in Hong Kong. In many previous days of our discussion, I spoke about uh, the Hong Kong uh, history. Uh, Hong Kong was uh, handed over to uh, back to uh, England in sorry ba back to China uh, in 1997. Hong Kong was uh, a colony of Britain till 1997 and formally Britain gave back Hong Kong to China on the condition that uh, there would exist a one country two systems. Hong Kong will continue to be under the control of China it is a part of it will be a part of China, but democracy will prevail in Hong Kong. But ever since then what happened was that China has been trying to its iron hand on Hong Kong, depriving Hong Kong people of the democratic rights that they had enjoyed under the British rule. A visit to Afghanistan. Pakistan Prime Minister vows to help stem bloodshed. You see Afghanistan ever since uh, Afghanistan was under the during the cold war time Afghanistan was a kind of a puppet country of Soviet Union. When Soviet Union collapsed Afghanistan became uh, uh, their his Prime Minister his pre, uh, Afghanistan president was, uh, was uh, hanged in public in a football stadium and uh, uh, it resulted in anarchy. Uh, so, listen anarchy is the breeding ground for terrorism. It was during that time that Taliban forces, Pakistan supported Taliban forces, they moved on to Afghanistan and they are even now challenging the legitimately elected Afghanistan government. So, Pakistan Prime Minister personally went to Afghanistan, met its president and said that they would do all it they can to control Taliban, Talibanism in Afghanistan and Taliban leaders and Afghanistan government talked in Qatar. They met in Qatar and went for negotiations, but nothing actually evolved. Now, Pakistan Prime Minister himself has gone to Afghanistan and said that they would do all it can, Pakistan can to help uh, 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 smooth running of Afghanistan administration. So, we have to wait and see. We must be, uh, we must be aware of all the uh, developments. Modi narrows down financial year 21 GDP outlook to 10.6 contraction. Okay. The rating agency had earlier forecast that Indian economy would shrunk, uh, would shrink by 11.5 percent. This was the original prediction of Moody's. You know that Moody, uh, Standard and Poor, Fitch, Grizzle all are credit rating agencies. So, these financial agencies uh, uh, predicted, Moody predicted that uh, India's economy would contract by 11.5 percent. What is meant by economic contraction? Last year, if India produced 100 rupees worth goods and services, this time it would make only 88.5. That is what is meant by contraction of 11.5 percent. So, meaning this year we will be able to produce only goods and services worth 88.5, which is bad for the country. But now they have revised. Listen, during September and October for two continuous months, Trade has improved within the country, which gives uh, hope to the nation. And now, Moody's have uh, uh, narrows down, uh, have narrowed down the outlook to 10.6 percent contraction. So they now predict that India's contraction will not be as severe as they predicted earlier, or it will be only contracting by 10.6 percentage. Prime Minister. Mo closest uh, uh, fintech ties with Luxembourg. Luxembourg is a country in Europe. Mind you, Europe has got 48 countries and uh, Luxembourg is the financial capital of Europe. 
Luxembourg is the third uh, FII, foreign institutional investor in India, the third largest foreign portfolio investor, portfolio means institutional, foreign portfolio investor or foreign institutional investor in the country. So, uh, now uh, after two decades India has uh, uh, gone for a summit meeting with Luxembourg though conducted uh, virtually. So, you should know what Luxembourg is and you should know that Luxembourg is the third largest uh, source of foreign portfolio investment in this country. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you have uh, watched the video with keenness and genuine interest and that is what we require. Uh, I hope uh, all of you uh, would uh, revise the newspapers. Tomorrow there is no live classes. Uh, but the day after tomorrow we have got 3 at 8 o'clock in the morning at 12 o'clock I shall come with the newspaper of uh, Saturday and Sunday. So, we have got 2 newspapers to read and again at 3 o'clock 3 p.m. on Monday another online session. So, we have got 3 online session on, on uh, Monday. So, uh, this is we are establishing a good link you should understand the, uh, the uh, concerns that we have for you. We are in full steam working for all of you. You should also reciprocate by working genuinely hard. Uh, thank you all, thank you all you have uh, thanked me, thank you all. Ensure that uh, all of you attend the class. Tell your friends that we have a platform of this kind. That will be a great encouragement to all of us and uh, ensure that you all uh, subscribe to our social media platform. Good luck and have a very good day ahead.